welcome to 5 Round MMA, episode number 20. This week's episode, we have a full review of UFC on Field TV, and also take a look ahead at the Ultimate Fighter finale. Please welcome Alex Ramirez and Albert Zeta. Thank you very much, our producer Gabriel Zeta, for that lovely introduction. Yeah, UFC's getting back to the swing of things. Now we have a fuel car, we got the Ultimate Fighter, got UFC on Fox coming up. It's going to be a busy April. Yep. And not only that, we have a special treat today. Oh yeah, we do have a special guest coming up, guys, so make sure you guys stick around for that. As for right now, we have latest news and headlines. Gamma, what do you got? Let's start off the show with Matt Mitrion, Meathead, winning last night. How is that a headliner news? Well, there's a reason why we put a segment, too. I, I don't want to talk about that. Well, no, this brings up a good, a good oh. point. Uh, your boy, Ted Duffy, also uh, Oh, him. yeah. Ted Duffy has a win over him, too. And I think there's only one thing to do now. What? Matt Maitreon versus Ted Duffy. What? Really? <laughs> you really. So, Joe Silva, if you're hearing out there, and this is the one I want. Todd Duffy versus me head because I know Todd Duffy's gonna knock him out. Me head doesn't scare you at all. <laughs> no, dog. <laughs> Bacon <laughs> we'll scares me more than me head. We'll see in the upcoming weeks if Joe Silva listens to his podcast or not. He makes that fight happen. So uh, now we have Chris Wyman training with the Ultimate Fighter Scott, uh, Uriah Hall to prepare for Anderson Silva. Mm. Is that like because of Chael Sonnen's training with Uriah Hall? So kind of like a third degree type of thing. Yeah. That's what it sounds like to me too, actually. Yeah, I mean, like, what does that say about uh, Chris Weidman? Like, oh, I'm a true contender, but well, I'm training with Chris, somebody. Chris Weidman fighter. actually has a win over him yeah. against Uriah Hall, so uh, maybe they're just uh, patching things up, or yeah. I don't know. Oh, he's a he's a golden boy this season, man. He's everywhere you guys look. So, but we'll see if it actually pays out. Well, against his... one thing before we leave, too, uh, Chris Weidman is a wrestling expert, but. And Uri Hall is obviously a striking expert. Yeah. So it's almost a perfect match, actually. Yeah. I wonder, uh, was Mark Munoz not available? <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> so now we got Brad Pickett seeking a match with Michael McDonald. Your boy, Michael McDonald. I love it. Uh, yeah, Brad Pickett was successful against his uh, bout against Mike Easton. So good. Yeah, Michael McDonald needs to get right back on the horse. What better way to do it than going after a guy that has a win, has a big name, and has a lot of fights in the featherweight division. Yeah, I want to point out, too, last week. Oh, uh, we, uh we actually pointed out last week about how tough this bantamweight division is yeah. and what happened. Fight of the night. Brad Pickett makes him deliver fight of the night. So there you guys go. Get a little learning here on 5 on MMA. And then the last breaking news, we got Cyborg Santos earning the next Invicta FC featherweight title shot. I don't think yes. it was a big surprise. I think everyone expected her to win. I think it would have been a bigger surprise if she lost. It was a TKO win. Um, she looked impressive. Yeah, I think the biggest news was like her, her weight when she came in. Mm-hmm. I know it's taboo to talk about a woman's weight, but <laughs> she came in like at 144, I think. So people said, oh, she's dropping down. Oh, yeah, all she can. But she's getting ready to drop down at 135. So we'll see how it goes. I mean, she obviously is a skilled fighter. She won easily. We'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm pretty sure she won't have a problem winning that Invicta and ruling Invicta as long as she wants. Mm-hmm. So is that it for latest news? And That's it for today. All right, guys. So stick around. We have a special guest to interview with uh, our good friend Kevin Lee, guys. So stick around. All right, everybody. If you like what you hear out there and want to hear more of it, make sure to follow us on Twitter at 5 Round MMA and always check out the website, 5RoundMMA.com. 5 Round MMA is brought to you by SportsCeneTV.net. Get all your prep school sports information at sportsscenetv.net. Five Round MMA is brought to you by True Athletes Training Systems. Unlock your inner athlete at trueathletes.com. In this corner, we have a special guest with us, Kevin Lee. Hey, Kevin. Alex Ramirez here. I want to thank you for taking the time out and doing this. And Kevin's a really good fan of a Five Round, of, of friend of Five Round MMA. And uh, we know all about them, but for, uh, do us a favor and tell the, fa- tell the fans out there a little about yourself, about your athletic career, and how you got into MMA. Um, I started off uh, wrestling. Uh, I wrestled through high school, and then um, I wrestled for Grand Valley State in college. Um, I wrestled the first two years, and uh, I've always I've been a fan of MMA before I even started wrestling. MMA is what got me to wrestle, so... Uh, my last year, I did amateur MMA and wrestling at the same time, and it, it was tough, but I, I balanced between the two, and um, after Nationals last year, I just decided to make the leap into the pros, and I've been doing that ever since, and I'm, I'm not wrestling anymore, but I'm doing what I love. And you have an upcoming fight coming in a couple of weeks. Can, uh, let me know about your opponent and his fighting style and all that good stuff, man. Uh, yeah, I'm fighting um, Kyle Prepolek, uh April 13th. Down in South Bend, Indiana. Uh, Prepolek was a, uh, I believe he's a Bellator vet. He's fought in Bellator three or four times, I believe. And uh, 
think he's got a three and one record with them, and he's five and two overall. I want to say um, Southpaw, uh, but it, it should be a good fight. It should be a really good fight. So, like you said, you're very almost close to the elite level. How far away do you think you are in your training to be uh, competitive on the UFC, Bellator, World Series of Fighting, uh, MMA level? Um, I think I'm. Uh, the the guys that I've been training with and the guys that I've been fighting, the last guy that I fought fought in Strike Force and Bellator, um, and I did pretty well against him. And I'm fighting another Bellator vet here. I, the guys that I've been fighting, I think I'm at that. I'm, I think I'm at that level. Um, I'm not at the UFC level yet. Uh, I would say uh, the plan is another year, and I'll be at the UFC level. Talk about your training camp and your coaches and your partners and how they've really prepared you so far in your MMA career. Oh, I've got I've got great training partners where I'm at now. Uh, I think it's the best gym in Michigan. I've been to a lot of gyms over here, and um, I've been training with guys like Darren Cruzshank and. Cody, Cody Stamen and Sean Desay, you know, the real pro level guys, you know, um, and I've kind of, I've bounced around, uh, through the beginning of my career, but now I, I've really found a place where I can really hone my skills and get working with the top guys. All right, Kevin, if you can stick around for us, we're going to have a review of the UFC on field car TV. All right, everybody. If you like what you hear out there, I want to hear more of it. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at 5 Round MMA and always check out the website 5RoundMMA.com. 5 Round MMA is brought to you by SportsCeneTV.net. Get all your prep school sports information at SportsCeneTV.net. 5 Round MMA is brought to you by True Athletes Training Systems. Unlock your inner athlete at TrueAthletes.com. Now it's time for UFC on Field TV in Sweden. Yeah, uh, welcome back, guys. Um... Kevin Lee is really active on Twitter. You can follow him at First Name Kevin. And he had an interesting tweet uh, yesterday about uh, how impressed you were with uh, Gegar Mousasi's uh, debut. Can you t- give us your thoughts about uh, his fight and what you saw as opposed to like what regular fans didn't really see? Yeah. Yeah, I, I-, I love that fight yesterday. I, I love uh, Gegard's style. Um, I think I thought he fought the perfect fight. Uh, you know, he-, he wasn't overly aggressive. He kept the distance real well. He he used that jab. He used the the jab hook, you know, and he and he threw the right hand too to keep him from circling. Um, I I thought he fought a perfect fight. All right, if you guys were watching last week, uh, you know, instead I brought up Papi Abedi, and um, one person that did agree with me was Kevin Lee. What were your thoughts on that close uh, fight? <laughs> hey, uh, you know, I, the, I I'm a huge Thiago Alves fan. So when when Poppy fought Tiago, he really surprised me in that fight with Tiago. He he looked real good on the feet um, versus Tiago. Uh, he he looked kind of flat yesterday, but I, you know I, I still got hope for him. I, I think he'll I think he'll come up. All right, going back to another fight on the card. It's actually in your weight class, uh, lightweight. Uh, Ryan Couture made his debut against uh, the veteran Ross Pearson. What are your thoughts about that fight? What did you see in Ryan Couture's style that you kind of uh, liked or didn't like? Um, I, I thought, I always think, I, I've seen a lot of uh, Ryan Couture's fights. Um, he's very unorthodox. I, I think he has a, a good style, um, but he, I think he need he's not um, honed in on one style, if you know what I mean. You know, I, I think if he would have focused more on uh, the clinch work that he was doing, that he could have pulled off the fight. But, again, Pearson's... Pearson's experience, that's that's where it came through. I think it was Pearson's experience, staying calm, staying relaxed, wait, being patient, letting them circle around and, and catching them with the big shots. Sticking with the Ryan Couture fight, do you think that was a clean break or do you think that was just a cheap punch by Ross Pearson? Can you give me like a fighter's perspective on that? Oh, no, I, th- I, th- I thought it was all fair. Yeah, I, I thought it was totally fair. Uh, I th- think there was another fight that was like that uh, Michael Johnson he caught uh, he caught him with a with a head kick as soon as he was standing up, and I I think those were the just about the same, and it, and it was totally fair. You know, it's protect yourself at all times, and it, he just caught him, and it's a it's a strikes that you never see coming that catch you. So that's all it was. And sticking with the the fighter's perspective, 
Uh, Musashi really used his jab last night and used it as an effective tool. Some people might find a kind of a boring to, uh, style of fight, but just give us what you think about the how a jab can really work in an MMA fight uh, to get a victory. Yeah, it, it could. Um, I think a, a big misconception that a lot of guys have is just that it's, you know, just a jab. You know, a lot of fans just say, oh, like they see George St. Pierre and they say, oh, well, all he's doing is jabbing. Like, jabs hurt, you know. It's it's a punch. You know, you're getting punched in the face. So, and you can see it on, you can see it on, uh, on, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on his name. Uh, Latif's, yeah. You can see it, you can see the damage occurring on Latif's face, you know, you I, I think he was using it very – he was using it defensively, but he was using it offensively at times too. You know, he – the jab was used to, to stop Latif's movements. It was stopped – used to, in the middle of his combinations. Latif was throwing that big right hand, and, and Gergard was just picking him apart with it. Uh, before we uh, sign off, if any, any final thoughts about the UFC on field card uh... – yeah, the UFC on field card. Uh, yeah, you have any I, thoughts about I, that? I really enjoyed that card yesterday. I don't know. Uh, a lot of fans were giving it some crap about Latif being in the main event and, and this and that, but I really enjoyed that card. And one of the big things that surprised me was just the Swedish audience. Like, they were so behind Latif. It, it made it feel like a real main event type feel. I, I couldn't imagine if Gustafsson was actually in it, but um, I think it was the the, the fans and – Oh yeah, yeah, it was it was great, yeah, and and they they just cheered like crazy whenever he did anything. If he, if he landed a punch, they cheered like crazy, which is, is always fun to have, you know. And you get it with these international cards in Brazil and Japan, and you know, whenever they go somewhere and they got hometown fighters, and it just makes a, the card really fun. So I, I I enjoyed the card top to bottom. And uh, before you leave, real quick, uh, you have a fight coming up in a couple weeks. Just uh, remind the people again. Where 13. and when? Yep. Next card. Uh, in uh, South Bend, Indiana. Hmm? Um, and what's the name of the promotion? Uh, it's called uh, Any Any Michigan Michigan Fight League. I, I I can't pronounce it. I honestly can't. It's called Indy Indy Michigan Fight League or something like that. It's uh with with the best fighters from Indiana and Michigan. Make sure you guys follow Kevin Lee on Twitter at First Name Kevin. Again, Kevin Lee, thank you a lot for doing this. Oh, yeah, I, anytime. All right, everybody. If you like what you hear out there and want to hear more of it, make sure to follow us on Twitter at 5 Round MMA and always check out the website, 5RoundMMA.com. 5 Round MMA is brought to you by SportsScenetv.net. Get all your prep school sports information at SportsScenetv.net. Five Round MMA is brought to you by True Athletes Training Systems. Unlock your inner athlete at trueathletes.com. Now it's time for a preview of the Ultimate Fighter Finale. Yeah, this week, uh, the big uh, sudden... I don't think you can call it surprise, though, because I've seen a lot of uh, commercials, a lot of advertisement, and I always see Uriah Hall. Well, and, we don't know and, yet. Um, we have still one more episode before the finale. I don't know. Don't know they've, been, they've been promoting a lot of Uriah Hall, so I don't think none of it's a big surprise. That's hearsay. I think you're, reading, <laughs> you're looking into the tea leaves. You don't know yet. You have one more episode this Tuesday, and then we'll see who's in the finale. Yeah, but, but what we do know for sure is that uh, the main event it will feature uh, Uriah Faber and Scott Jurgensen, who mm-hmm. are filling in for Mighty Mouse, who got injured, and that kind of like a grudge match between I guess they're, they're, I guess they're friends, right? They're, they're yeah, they're friends. They're, they say they're buddies. They talk every now and then. Yeah, I bet they both promise to kind of throw down, give a show for the yeah, fans. Yeah, they're, they're both a real stand-up fighters. Yeah, um, and I think they both have wrestling backgrounds. But even though I think uh, Uriah actually has the better wrestling of the two, but they both agreed on standing up. I think it is going to be a stand-up fight. It should be a fun, exciting fa- fight. But I see Faber coming on top of that yeah, one. Yeah, I think uh, either win or loss for either fighter won't hurt them in the company standing because obviously the USC loves it when a guy steps up with short notice, mm-hmm. as these both guys did. Just and like your the, boy Chris Lieben. Chris Lieben, two fights in a week, right? Yeah, like, then, where he's then, at, he's then what happened now. when he took that third one, though? <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, he's almost untouchable now. He could lose as many times as he yeah, wants. Yeah, that's true. Get fired. with drugs. Yeah, I get caught with drugs. It's still a job. It's still a job. It's just like Stephen Bonner. You could take a fight on short notice. Get caught for steroids and still have a job. job. But, um, yeah, I think uh, um, win or lose a draw, I think they'll be both in good standing. Yeah, it, it might even be the fight of the night. 
Yeah, could uh, be. I don't think the other fights are going to last that long. Are you sure? Because uh, we got a, a women's fight, the second uh, fight in uh-huh. UFC history for women, uh, Misha Tate and Kat Zingano battle for the honor to be, uh, as I call the other woman on the next season. Because <laughs> obviously Wonder Woman, Ronda Rousey's the, 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 the host. So imagine those commercials. Uh-huh. It'll be Ronda Rousey, big frame, and then the, the, in, the, in the back, uh, Misha Tate or Kat Zingano. Your right? girl, Misha Tate. I'm pretty sure it's going to say Kat. Zagano, because yeah. I think she's going to get the upset on Misha Tate. Really? Oh, wow. yeah. yeah. I haven't done a lot of research, but I like the way she looks. <laughs> Just by looks alone, I'll she's got Kat Zagano. <laughs> but like, I think that if we talked about this earlier about the women's band and weight division being kind of uh, a mishmash because all the girls have beaten each other up, really. Yeah, it, everybody has a win over each other, yeah, and except Ronda for Ronda Rousey. She has she, a win over everybody. She, she has a win over everybody. So, so it's a back and forth. It's almost like the flyweight division right yeah. now. Yeah, they all beat up each other just to get the champion. So should be interesting. Uh, a lot's on the line for these uh, these two women to see. It's a big spotlight, even though they're up against Ronda Rousey. But luckily, they have Liz Carmouche. She's it's a stardom now, even though she lost. So she's a big star now just by being mentioned in the same breath as Ronda Rousey. So yeah. it's a big honor and a um, big payday, too. Yeah. So, yeah, well, make sure you guys check that out. Make sure you guys check out the, epi- the final episode of the season the finale. See if Ryan Hall actually did make it into the finale. What she did. <laughs> we don't know that. <laughs> anyway, is, that, is that a Cedar guarantee? That's a Cedar guarantee. That's a five round MMA guarantee. Oh, Trust God. me. There is speaking no, for us now. Speaking for us, yeah. Because <laughs> it's 100%. <laughs> yeah, I, those betting nods, you got to bet. Okay. So and, we'll see what happens. Yeah, so, uh, last time I took his, uh, his advice on a bet, we came out sh- on the short end. And hey, Michael McDonald almost won the fight. I don't know what the big deal is. Well, he did get, he get uh, right about Poppy. So. Yeah, you know. Uh, okay. Oh, He's like, kind of on a hot streak right now. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, make sure you guys check it next week. We'll have a full review of the tough finale. We'll also have a preview of the UFC on Fox 7 at Henson versus Melendez, champion versus champion. So make sure to follow us on Twitter at 5 Round MMA. Subscribe to us on iTunes and YouTube. And always check out the website, 5 roundmmacom Albert, you got any final words? I'd like to thank everybody for listening. I'd like to thank our special guest, Kevin Lee. Yeah, thank uh, you. Man. He's a big fan of our show, and we're a big fan of him. Uh, keep, keep following him on Twitter. Check him out. Um, I like to thank everyone that's been listening. I also like to thank our executive producer Anthony Soriana, our uh, producer Guillermo Cita, our sound engineer. You can never see him on camera because you don't want to. Always a trolley. <laughs> and uh, our, t- our technician, Big Game. Thanks everybody for listening.